On the front line of the elimination of nature, as well as the destruction of the flora and fauna, is the spreading of millions of tons of chemical poisons. Chemicals deposited in the food plants of all kinds are then eaten by the human beings, leading them to become sick, waste away, and finally die. Valuable plants, animals, other creatures, lizards, insects, aquatic life forms, and birds are also poisoned and exterminated by these chemical poisons. By the year 2030, the Amazon rainforest will be irreversibly destroyed by up to 60% due to the conscienceless and criminal logging of it. Already today, three quarters of the native forests in Asia are cleared and destroyed beyond recovery. Of the 32 million species and kinds of plants and animals, more than two thirds live in the native forests. Altogether, around 50,000 species disappear every year. It is possible that by the year 2100, 50% of all genera and species of all living organisms, such as plants, animals, and insects, etc., will be extinct. If overfishing is not stopped, no commercial fishing will be possible anymore at the latest by the year 2050 because the seas and all waters will be completely fished empty. More than 1.5 billion human beings will be deprived of their only source of protein upon which their life depends. Already in 25 years, the Arctic could be free of ice in the summer. The warming of the earth will thereby increase all the more because the smaller the surface of ice, the less the sun's rays will be reflected. When the methane gas defrosts as a consequence of the warming of the oceans, then this will lead to the average temperature of the planet further drastically changing and climbing by up to 7 or 8 degrees Celsius. With every degree of warming of the atmosphere, the tropical cyclones will increase by up to 35%. The melting of the Himalayan glaciers alone, which threatens in the future, will become a catastrophe for more than 1.5 billion human beings due to the water shortages. In India alone, when the great droughts come, around 65 to 75 percent of the population will be immediately affected. Southern Europe and southwestern USA, to Asia, sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East of Australia will succumb to the destructive dry periods. In the future, all kinds of extreme weather events and earthquakes will drive many African and Southeast Asian countries into national decay. The CO2 output will continue to drastically increase and probably double within the next 15 years, whereby inevitably more and more climatically conditioned natural catastrophes will appear and cause monstrous destruction and cost many thousands of human lives. Uncommonly, gigantic floods will climb, for example, in Western South America, New Zealand, Northern Australia, and Eastern China. Worldwide, if the sea level climbs only around a half a meter, then on the coasts, about 140 cities with more than a million human beings will be threatened. The sea level is rising approximately 4.5 millimeters per year, but by the year 2100, the rise in the sea level will already have to be measured in meters. In 35 to 50 years, there'll be around 300 to 350 million refugees who leave their homelands due to climate change and its catastrophic consequences, as well as the effects of negative and difficult political, militaristic, religious and terroristic troubles and machinations. Increasingly, there will be an inability to keep up with the growing problems of unemployment, sanitation, garbage, energy requirements, food, fresh water, housing, and so on. By the time environmental pollution resolutions are applied into reality, 10 or 20 years have transpired. Our population growth is approximately 100 million per year, which means that once these resolutions have been implemented, they are already very much outdated. At this rate, by the year 2050, there will be around 12 billion human beings who will populate and torment the Earth. 
The time has long ago passed when lax, idiotic, useless and unserviceable international climate protection agreements can be adopted. Because now, intellect and rationality and a resolute, drastic, clear, useful and valuable action are demanded in order to finally prevent the threatening tragedy of the future. All nations of the world must very drastically limit emissions worldwide as well as the exploitation of resources. All environmental pollution, environmental poisoning and environmental destruction must be immediately forbidden and stopped. The rapidly increasing overpopulation must be stopped by very quickly introducing and carrying out a worldwide and federally controlled and effective regulation of births. Only in this way can the widespread human tragedy still abate, which menacingly looms on the human being's horizon of destiny.